China's rare earths, dominating the global supply chain, breaking the Western monopoly. Why is the U.S. rare earth stockpile down to just 50 days? Why did Musk say it would take 20 years to refine them? As a veteran engineer who has been deeply involved in the rare earth industry for 15 years, I have personally experienced countless technological battles and market games. The recent series of events, however, is a particularly significant chapter in the industry's history. Just last week, I received a private message from an American colleague, his words filled with anxiety, helplessness, and urgency. He revealed that the production line for Lockheed Martin's prized F-35 fighter jet had been forced to halt for two full weeks. Keep in mind, the F-35 is not only the core of the U.S. Air Force's combat power but also a vital piece of equipment for NATO allies. The ripple effects of this production stoppage are now creating waves across the landscape of global military deployment. Meanwhile, Tesla's ambitious mass production plan for its humanoid robot has been postponed until 2026 due to a shortage of rare earth supplies. This product, which carries Elon Musk's vision of a future labor revolution and was slated to reshape the manufacturing industry at a scale of 1 million units per year, is now being choked by the rare earth bottleneck. Even more shocking, top-secret data from the Pentagon's military reserves shows a red alert for its rare earth inventory, which can only sustain 50 days of high-intensity military demand. Once depleted, the U.S. military's advantage in high-precision weapon systems, satellite navigation, and electronic warfare equipment will face an immense challenge. What industrial shadow war is hidden behind these seemingly isolated events? And why has the United States, which has always prided itself on its technological hegemony, fallen into such a predicament? Let's peel back the layers and uncover the truth behind the battle for rare earths. I. America's rare earth predicament, from lies to collapse. In April 2025, China formally implemented a rare earth export licensing system, requiring a one certificate per batch policy and launching an electronic traceability system. This policy struck like a precision hammer, hitting the lifeline of America's high end manufacturing sector. Michael Hart, president of the American Chamber of Commerce, admitted helplessly in a public speech China hasn't banned exports, but the approval process is making our factories wait until our hair turns white. Behind this statement lies the systemic crisis currently gripping the U.S. rare earth supply chain. Looking back, the U.S. government had repeatedly claimed on the international stage that its rare earth reserves are sufficient for decades, attempting to create the illusion of resource self-sufficiency. The reality, however, is brutal. According to a confidential March 2025 report from the U.S. Geological Survey USGS, its inventory of rare earth oxides for key areas like semiconductors and new energy vehicles was already nearing the warning line, with strategic reserves for some core products down to a mere 50-day supply. This crisis first manifested itself among defense giants, Lockheed Martin's F-35 fighter jet production line was forced to halt due to a shortage of neodymium iron boron, NDFAB, magnets, and Raytheon's missile guidance system assembly workshops also ground to a standstill. Even more tragically, the Mountain Pass rare earth mine, which the U.S. spent over a decade developing, has been unable to achieve a fully independent domestic supply chain due to its reliance on Chinese smelting technology and soaring environmental costs. This chain reaction, triggered by Chinese policy, is tearing apart the web of lies the U.S. had carefully woven about its rare earth capabilities. America's rare earth predicament is fundamentally a product of free market arrogance. Historically, starting in the 1980s, as China's rare earth mining technology advanced and production scaled up, American companies, driven by a cost-first business logic, successively shut down key domestic rare earth projects like the Mountain Pass Mine. At that time, the U.S. possessed some of the world's top rare earth reserves but outsourced the entire industrial chain, including mining, separation, and purification, to China, a country that now holds over 80% of the world's rare earth smelting capacity. The U.S. retained only mining rights as a symbolic, industrial bottom line. This short-sighted decision seemed clever in the smooth currents of globalization, U.S. companies focused on high-value-added downstream product development by purchasing low-cost rare earth raw materials from China, achieving efficient capital allocation. But when China tightened export quotas in 2010 for environmental and strategic resource considerations, the long hollowed out American rare earth industry instantly revealed its fatal flaw. There was only one rare earth separation plant left in the entire country, and it still needed to import key extraction agents from China. 
Even core components for the high-precision guided weapons urgently needed by the Pentagon faced a production crisis due to the broken rare earth supply chain. It was like entrusting the heart that sustains your industrial lifeblood to someone else, once the supplier tightens the valve, the entire industrial system faces suffocation and paralysis. What is more alarming is the strategic miscalculation reflected in this Comprador mindset. The United States became overly reliant on the free flow of the international market, ignoring the strategic value of rare earths as the vitamins of industry in critical fields like semiconductors, new energy, and national defense. As trade friction and geopolitical conflicts intensify, the beautiful illusion of the free market has finally crumbled in the face of the fragile rare earth supply chain, sounding an alarm for global industrial security. 2. China's Rare Earth Trump Card, Technological Monopoly and Strategic Resolve Tracing the history of the rare earth industry, China began its technological breakthrough journey in the 1970s. Facing a half-century-long technological blockade from the West, the team led by academician Su Guangxian spent years of dedicated research to successfully develop the cascade extraction method. This technology, hailed as the fifth great invention of China, increased the purity of separated rare earth elements to 99.9999%, shattering the Western technological monopoly in one fell swoop. With this unique skill, the cost of China's rare earth smelting and separation dropped by 70%, and its production capacity grew exponentially. As of 2024, China supports 92% of the world's refined rare earth capacity with just 33.8% of global reserves, and it holds an absolutely dominant position in the processing of medium and heavy rare earths, accounting for over 90% of the market. Ganzhou, as the world's largest production base for medium and heavy rare earths, has a supply chain that covers the entire process from mining and smelting to high-end material manufacturing. According to USGS data, over 85% of the rare earth ores mined globally each year must be shipped to China for key processing before they can be transformed into the magnetic and luminescent materials needed for cutting-edge equipment like new energy vehicle motors and MRI machines. The moat created by this technological gap is even more significant. A report from the U.S. Government Accountability Office, GAO, stated that the U.S. is at least 20 years behind China in rare earth purification technology. Even with an investment of tens of billions of dollars to rebuild its domestic industry, it would still be difficult to overcome core technological bottlenecks such as high-purity separation and waste recycling. Tesla founder Elon Musk once candidly stated, even if you gave the US 20 years, they couldn't refine qualified rare earths. Behind this assertion lies the practical constraint of free market economics, when the price of Chinese rare earth products is 60% lower than domestic US production capital naturally flows to the more economical producer. This has consistently deprived American companies of the incentive to invest in their domestic rare earth industry. More importantly, China has established a triple barrier in the full rare earth industrial chain, consisting of technology cost scale. This multi-dimensional competitive advantage is difficult to surpass in the short term. China's advantage in rare earths was not a gift from heaven, it was the fruit of the wisdom and sweat of generations of researchers. Looking back, before the 1980s, rare earth separation technology was firmly controlled by European and American companies through patent barriers. At the time, Western companies arrogantly declared, the Chinese will never master this technology. Faced with this blockade, Chinese research teams started from scratch, working day and night in their labs. After countless failures, they finally succeeded in developing the theory and process of cascade extraction in 1987. This technological breakthrough not only achieved high-purity separation of rare earth elements but also completely rewrote the global rare earth industry landscape with efficiency and cost advantages far superior to the West. After three decades of dedicated work, China has built a complete industrial chain covering exploration, mining, smelting, processing, and application. Data shows that over 90% of the world's refined rare earth products are supplied by Chinese companies, which have mastered the core technical standards from rare earth oxides to high-performance permanent magnet materials. This full-chain advantage has created a moat so deep that even if the US restarts domestic projects like the Mountain Pass mine, it still needs to ship the crude or to China for key processing. As Russian strategic expert Vladimir Yevsayev put it, in cutting-edge fields like military electronics and guidance systems, China's influence in the rare earth industry directly affects the production pace of US military equipment. From technological breakthrough to industrial dominance, the story of China's rise in rare earths is a textbook case of counterattack against Western monopoly. 
3. Europe and America's failed breakout, from the Swedish mind to the EU plan. Faced with China's rare earth pressure, Europe and the US have certainly tried to fight back. Sweden discovered Europe's largest rare earth deposit with over 1 million tons in reserves, but it will take at least 10 to 15 years to go from exploration to production, and environmental approvals and technological bottlenecks are slowing the project down. The EU has launched 47 strategic projects in an attempt to achieve rare earth self-sufficiency by 2030, but a French rare earth recycling plant won't be operational until 2027, and Germany's lithium refinery is still under construction. More embarrassingly, rare earth ores mined in Europe still need to be shipped to China for processing because they lack the necessary separation technology. The predicament of Europe and the US in the rare earth sector exposes the negative consequences of deindustrialization. Over the past few decades, Europe and the US shifted their manufacturing to developing countries to focus on finance and services. Now, trying to rebuild the rare earth supply chain requires not only huge investments but also retraining a workforce of technicians and engineers. Meanwhile, China, after decades of accumulation, has long since formed a complete ecosystem from mining and separation to application. For Europe and the US to replicate China's model in a short period is nothing short of a pipe dream. For escalating the game, China's boiling the frog slowly strategy. China's rare earth regulations are not a one-size-fits-all ban but a combination of slow approvals and precision strikes. On one hand, China has not completely banned exports but has extended approval times, leaving American companies not starved, but never full. On the other hand, China is focusing its restrictions on the export of medium and heavy rare earths, which are core materials for the F-35 fighter jet and humanoid robots. The masterstroke is the launch of an electronic traceability system to monitor the flow of rare earths, preventing smuggling and re-export trade. This strategy complies with international rules while making the US feel the pain acutely. As the Washington Post put it, China is using intricate embroidery skills to make America bleed. China's rare earth strategy is a classic example of modern international gamesmanship, profoundly illustrating the Eastern wisdom of combining hardness with softness. Looking back, after a partial suspension of rare earth exports in 2010 caused drastic shocks in the international market, China learned from the experience and abandoned heavy-handed, one-size-fits-all tactics in favor of a gradual regulatory approach. This boiling-the-frog slowly style of resource management has not only avoided triggering the US to invoke the Defense Production Act to accelerate its domestic rare earth industry but has also put American, Japanese, and European companies that rely on Chinese rare earths in a dilemma. On one hand, they cannot find alternative sources of supply in the short term, on the other hand, their long-term dependence has blunted their motivation for innovation in deep processing and material development, causing them to gradually lose their global market competitiveness. From a geopolitical perspective, rare earth controls are more like a strategic signal China is sending to the world. Against the backdrop of surging global demand for rare earths in high-tech industries like semiconductors and new energy vehicles, China is making its position clear through precise regulation of quotas, technical standards, and export controls. In the fields of technology and resources that concern the future of humanity, China has always advocated for win-win cooperation, but only on the basis of equal dialogue, respect for intellectual property, and adherence to international rules. This strategy not only safeguards national core interests but also establishes a new paradigm of cooperation for the healthy and sustainable development of the global industrial chain. This silent war over rare earths is, in essence, a struggle for control of the global industrial chain. With the trump card of rare earths, China has not only defended its own interests but has also broken the West's monopoly in high-tech fields. However, we must also recognize that rare earths are not a weapon for suppression but a resource for promoting global technological development. In the future, China is willing to share its rare earth technology and capacity with all countries, but on one condition, fair cooperation, without bullying. What are your thoughts on this rare earth rivalry? Feel free to leave a comment below. If this post gets over 100,000 likes, I will do a deep dive into the future layout of China's rare earth industry. Thanks for reading. Follow me to get the latest updates on the rare earth industry in real time, and let's witness every step of a great nation's rise together.